Hello there, my fellow Battle Brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. In today's homebrew, we're going to tackle a no-nonsense kind of chapter, which gets the job done and even has a bit of a sinister reputation. They are known as the Graven Skulls. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed and learn a few things about them, shall we? The earliest records of the Graven Skulls date back to the era following the end of the Great Scouring, a great war conducted against the hated traitor legions after the end of the Horus Heresy. The bitter fighting of the Heresy had left the Imperium a dismal, shattered thing, hearkening the beginning of a new age of humanity founded in blood, battle, and the enshrinement of the Emperor as a god. In the wake of this bloody period, the Imperium was reorganized, and many changes were enacted both in the military and the government. Due to the scarcity of information regarding the identity and status of many second founding chapters, a huge amount of mystery and legend surrounds some of them. Some have appeared in the annals of imperial history in name alone, their deeds and fates unknown to all but the immortal emperor. Others have a glorious history, yet they have not been heard of in centuries. The status of some chapters of the Second Founding is disputed by especially learned savants and historians, although, obviously, never in the presence of the actual subject. Some chapters that believe themselves to be of the Second Founding may not be at all, while others may belong to the Second Founding but be entirely ignorant of the fact. The ten millennia history of the modern Imperium, so to speak, its annals are so scattered and incomplete that it is likely the truth of the matter will never be known. And so, we arrive at the actual topic of today. The Graven Skulls are believed to be one such chapter, founded in the wake of the Age of Darkness, but whose details of their conception are either lost or carefully occluded. It is believed that the Graven Skulls were conceived from the chaos and strife of the Horus Heresy itself, molded from the very fabric of disorder, bloodshed, and hatred which tore the galaxy asunder. The lineage of this mysterious and isolated chapter remains unknown. However, the bitter anima of these vengeful and murderous Astartes had garnered the chapter a fearful reputation as bringers of death and terror. Despite an infamous reputation, the chapter fights tirelessly in service of the Emperor, never relenting in battle beneath the gaze of their Umbra Dominus, or Chapter Master. However, the chapter's detractors point out that these Astartes display tendencies like those that have been condemned for committing some unspeakable crime, like those seeking absolution from the God Emperor for a great sin. Their restless fleet plows the cold void from one campaign to the other, resupplying on the move, never pausing, prosecuting an endless war. They never garrison, nor do they build, they only destroy and kill, determinedly and with the inexorable progress of a contagion, as their enemies keep falling before them. The earliest recorded campaign for these fellows was the purification of Vaxenide, in some unknown date in M32. Situated at the edge of the Calixis sector, Vaxenide was a poorly supplied and desperate frontier world struggling to enter the higher echelons of the sector planets. While this oppressive rule was efficient in simply delivering the Imperial Tithe, it was less effective in controlling the population proper. Due to that, underground chaos cults began popping up, threatening the stability of the entire region. While minor uprisings are not uncommon in many places in the Imperium, it was here that a cult called the Black Society gained great influence and began instigating ever bolder attacks against the unprepared government. The chaotic machinations of the Black Society came to a head when seemingly out of nowhere came a warband of the Night Lords called the Night Wing. Within a single night this bloody-handed warband brought the world to its knees. This savage attack would cripple the world, as chaos influence began to spread to other planets in the region. The leader of the warband, one Kel Ophion, crowned himself as the Lord of Vaxenide. The traitors began to dig into position all over the borders of Kel Ophion's new domain. 
But then, on the outskirts, it began to fall silent, with desperate pleas for help falling on deaf ears. A strange onyx vessel appeared above the orbit of Vaxenide. A large, heavily armored warship graced with strange and disturbing iconography. Observing the ship with curiosity, the Nightwing forces held their fire to see what this thing would do next. What it did next was rain down fire upon the surface of Vaxenide. The Chaos Lord simply smiled and laughed as the world of Vaxenide burned and the bombardment from orbit continued relentlessly. With the decimation of their worlds forcing them to rally, the Black Society cultists along with Nightwing forces prepared ambushes, defenses, and organized armored columns to obliterate their foe in the cramped streets. With these heavy defenses and meticulously thought out plans, the Chaos Forces would be prepared for any foe. When the Graven Skulls finally made planetfall, cadres of Spectre assault squads attacked out of the sky, drop pods and teleport units striking into the heart of Vaxenide. The Graven Skull Stalkers rained death from the skies, while Death Reaper Terminator squads, backed by Vindicators and Rhinos, tore into the streets. At the fore, the Umbra Dominus himself, along with his Wraith Guard, struck the throne room, tearing through the Night Lord units and ripping the Chaos Lord apart. It is said that the tyrant Kelofion laughed and spat at the feet of the Skulls. Despite the loss of their leader and their routing from Vaxenide, the Nightwing did manage to retreat somewhat into the void where they came. The blooding of both factions created a long line of hatred which still burns in the 41st millennium. Having no official homeworld, the Graven Skulls reside in their Crusade fleet, upon battle barges, strike cruisers, training vessels, and forge ships. The core belief of the chapter is first and foremost that they should always be as best equipped as possible. This enables one to endure and prevail against any enemy encountered and operate for long periods of time without resupply. The dogma is the cornerstone of the chapter's way of war as well. They are notable in the scattered Imperial records as maintaining a well-rounded capacity for unleashing multiple types of warfare. Some of the bias of these modes of warfare lean towards heavy assault formations and attritional engagements as evidenced by the particular use of close-range weaponry in the chapter. They rely upon their infantry to provide the strategic strength, with the bulk of tactical fire support coming from heavily armed support squads, and later on with many Terminators and Dreadnoughts providing reinforcement and assault spearheads where required. The reserve of their gene seed is spread throughout all the main starships, stored in the implantation chambers aboard each vessel. These places are the most heavily guarded on any vessel, and they will be defended by them to the last man if required, for the chambers contain the future of the chapter. It is unknown which Primarch Gene Seed was utilized in the creation of the Skulls. Their Gene Seed does seem relatively untainted, if subject to some long-term degradation. The few records that remain show that the Graven Skulls Gene Seed was branded as Chimeric, as it has been somehow altered during its creation. Even with these few facts known, the truth of who the Graven Skull's genetic forebears are will more than likely never be known. This, of course, doesn't really matter for the Graven Skulls, for they hold their loyalty, first and foremost, to the Master of Mankind, for he is the maker of all Space Marines. It is to him, and him alone, that the Graven Skulls hold both their faith and devotion to, for the Emperor is the Master of all. The core belief of the Graven Skulls is their unshakable determination that humanity should be free of terror and oppression. In their eyes, freedom can only be won by destroying those that would shackle and devour humanity. The battle for mankind can only be won via the endurance of any hardship. They believe that their unshakable resolution in the face of hardship, their iron will and inner strength, have helped them to grow beyond the need to adhere to the rigid dictates of the Codex Astartes. Instead, the Graven Skulls have chosen to forge their own path in life and war, using the blood-soaked battle wisdom earned out of millennia of endless warfare. Although they do look upon the Codex Astartes as a foundation for their way of life, they do not literally follow its every word. They do not believe in the rigidity of any dogma 
for that is what has led to much of the stagnation and apparent difficulties faced by the Imperium. The Graven Skulls also care very little for emblems of rank, except where absolutely required for battlefield recognition. Nor do these Astartes care for badges of honor or trinkets to commemorate deeds of valor. The closest these guys come to decoration is the respect for the actual marks of battle themselves on their plate, be they from an enemy blade or bullet. So long as the integrity of the armor is not compromised, this battle damage is sometimes left where it is, as a statement that there is nothing these space marines cannot endure. This, in turn, adds to the chapter's increasingly sinister appearance and deepening reputation among other space marines. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these Graven Skulls fellows for today. There are some more stories on their campaigns and a few other bits of lore, so maybe I can return to them someday if you guys like them. If nothing else, I think their appearance is quite cool and unique. Nothing like the sinister black and dark red to bring out the loyalty out of the average Imperial citizen. What about you though? Did you know about these guys? Are they among your favorite chapters? As always, I do look forward to reading your thoughts and questions in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode or found it informative, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and the Emperor protects.